So welcome everyone to our webinar about how you can make your chatbots more human. Uh, this is honestly, we, we've conducted webinars like this one in the past, but I was reviewing our webinars recently. We're in the process of uh, sort of going through our webinar strategy and seeing how we can change it to make it more useful to you guys. And I came across one of our older webinars where I remember watching it and I thought to myself, I could have done this webinar so much better. Um, so this webinar is sort of an attempt uh, to do that webinar in a much more engaging way and in a much more useful way for you guys. But we are going to cover a lot of new ground in this webinar as well. Uh, another point to note about this webinar, um, I don't know if you guys faced this yesterday, but Google was facing a lot of issues with their productivity apps. Um, Gmail, G Suite, um, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets were all facing issues. So I had a little trouble making these slides and I thought that that would be a good opportunity to try something new in the webinar format. So I'm going to try to spend as little time as possible in the slides today and more time in the actual builder so you guys can see what it actually looks like to build a chatbot and to optimize it to make it feel more human. Um, now with those two caveats out of the way, let's jump into the actual webinar. And as always, we like to start with a little bit of an overview just so that you guys know what you are, uh, what, what's in store for you in the next hour or so. Uh, as always, we like to start with intros, just an intro of who I am, uh, an intro of who the company is, just so that the newer viewers know um, where our knowledge is coming from, uh, just so that we don't so that I don't look like a disembodied head on your screen telling you what you should do in your marketing campaigns. Uh, then in the second part of the webinar, we will take a look at why your chatbots need to sound more human. Uh, so the topic of this webinar, if I flip back, is five tactics to make your chatbot more human. Uh, but before we even get into the five tactics, before you even try to implement these five tactics to make your chatbots feel more human, uh, we need to discuss why you would want to do this in the first place. How is it going to help you? How is it going to make your marketing campaigns or your customer service experience feel better, more efficient, and, and get better results for you? Finally, in the, or not finally, in the third part, we are going to uh, cover the basic principle, the basic overarching principle that we are going to use in this, um, in this webinar to make our chatbots feel more human. Uh, so there's one underlying principle that's going to inform each of the five tactics that we discuss, and it's worthwhile to keep that that principle in your mind as we go through the actual live demo part in part four, uh, just so that you guys know what uh, why it is we are doing what we are doing. Um, and then finally in part, uh, in part four, we are going to, uh, actually go into the tactics that we are, uh, that, that we're going to suggest to you guys, you can use those tactics, uh, to improve your chatbots and in, once we're done with that section, if you guys have any questions, we will answer them in the Q and a section of this webinar. Um, that's pretty much it. That's the, that's the overview of what we are going to do in this webinar. Uh, strap in, uh, it should be a good one. Uh, so let's start with the intros. I, if you guys have watched these webinars before, you'll know who I am. I host most of these webinars, if not all of them. Um, I'm a content marketer over here at ours and I design bots as well. Uh, and essentially what that means is I create content just like this webinar to help other marketers to help uh, other customer service execs get the most out of chatbots. Um, so I build, what I create webinars with this, I create guides, I create blogs, create videos. Um, as a company, as a whole, we have been around since 2016 and we essentially do that. We help marketers over here. I've kept it to marketers because we're primarily focusing on lead gen in this webinar, but we help customer service teams as well, boost their conversion rates, boost their uh, user engagement using conversational tech. And we've been doing that since 2016. Now what that looks like in practice is we, we essentially, if you're a marketer, for example, we take your regular form, we take your regular FAQ section, we take your regular landing page and we help you replace it with a chatbot. Uh, and the reason we do this is we found that people are more likely to actually share their contact details with you, their email, their phone number, whatever it is you need to follow up with them and turn them into a paying customer. If you interact with them through a chatbot versus one of these traditional mediums. Uh, and we're going to get into this a little bit more in the next section, but part of the reason that they, they, they like to do this is because chatbots feel a lot more engaging. Uh, it feels like you're actually talking to someone. Um, 
And so they're more likely to actually complete the interaction with the chat than with your traditional media. Uh, and I think that's actually a good place to switch over into um, the second section of this webinar where we are actually going to discuss why we need our chatbots to sound more human. Uh, so again, the topic of this webinar is to, to give you guys tactics to make your chatbots feel more human, but why do we want to do that in the first place? Um, that's the first question we need to answer. And if you think about it, the basic value proposition of a chatbot is that they feel more human than your traditional mediums of interaction. Uh, if you think about landing pages, if you think about websites, if you think about forms, if you think about the FAQ sections that you guys have on your pages, um, they get the job done, they convey information to your customers, they capture lead information back from them. Uh, but their biggest issue is that they aren't really engaging enough. If you think about how you go through a lead generation process, Currently, in most cases, what happens is you look something up on Google, you click on the first link that pops up, it's usually an ad, um, and then you're greeted by a wall of text uh, which has a form on it, like the one you're seeing on the left side of your screen over here. Uh, now, the issue with that form of interaction is that it's very impersonal. There's no question of calling it a customer service experience. You're not giving any customer service to the customer because you're not doing anything for them. You built this web page, you're spitting it out in front of them, and then they have to do all of the legwork to make sense of it and actually fill out the lead generation uh, flow. So they read through all of the text, they figure out what's useful for them, what's not. Uh, they figure out whether your company's a match for them, whether it's not. Uh, and then when they are ready, they fill out a form like the one that you are seeing on your screen right now. And they do all of that on their own. You're not actually interacting with them in any way. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but my dog in the background is, uh, is ears just pricked up because uh, there's a, I think an ambulance going by. Um, the perks of work from home. Um, I'm a little concerned that she might start barking in the middle, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if it comes to that. Um, anyways, uh, where was I? Yeah, the, the issue with these traditional forms of engagement is that they are they're, they're unengaging. People don't like reading through blocks of text. They don't like filling out forms. And most importantly, they're impersonal. There's no actual customer service going on. With a chatbot, you can flip the script on that. Uh, you can take that exact same information that you're collecting through the form. You can take the exact same information that you're conveying through your landing page. And if you present it in a conversational format where people have to chat with a piece of software to get that same information out, it completely changes the perception in the mind of your users, of your prospects, about how that interaction is going. Now, instead of doing everything on their own, instead of reading through a wall of text, instead of uh, filling out a form on their own, they are um, they're actually having a conversation with someone or rather something from your company. Uh, and for them, it feels like someone, or in this case, I guess something, because it's just a piece of software on the other end, is taking out the time to walk them through uh, the lead generation process. And over here, I have a legal example open uh, for cases like legal, for any B2C service use case, whether that's insurance, mortgage, um, legal, any financial services, even education and travel to an extent. Um, the prospect who's interacting with the lead generation flow, who's interacting with the landing page, isn't really an expert in what they're buying. No one's a mortgage expert. The average person is a mortgage expert or an insurance expert or a legal expert. Uh, so they appreciate having someone walk them through the entire process. They appreciate having their hand held through the entire process. And that is what a chatbot delivers uh, because it mimics the interaction of actually talking to a human being who would do the same thing, but without the actual human being on the other end. And obviously the business use, the business advantage of using a chatbot instantly, like the natural question that a lot of people have is, okay, so chatbots feel like a human being and they give the value of a human being, but why not just use a human being? Well, human beings are expensive. If you want to hire, I was actually listening to a customer call just yesterday um, where the customer said, the reason we shifted to a chatbot from live chat is because we just couldn't afford to keep someone uh, in the office whose entire job was just to look at the live chat and respond to customer queries. Um, now, with that out of the way, I think I've made a compelling enough argument about why you want your bots to feel more human. That's essentially the, the basic value proposition of a chatbot. Uh, we can go move on to how you can actually implement this. Uh, and I know that the, the topic of this webinar is, uh, is, is five tactics, but underlying all of these five tactics is one basic principle that you should keep in mind and it'll help you farm a whole bunch of other tactics as well if you just keep this one basic principle in mind. In fact, if you leave this webinar just remembering this principle, you'll probably be in good shape to essentially reverse engineer all of the other principles that we are talking about. And it's a lot easier than you think. A lot of people don't realize this, but 
the process of writing bot copy is a lot easier than you think because everyone is a chatbot copy expert. Um, the basic principle that we are talking about, of course, over here is um, to ask yourself what you would say if you were in the chatbot's position. Uh, so if you are collecting lead information through a chat conversation, or if you are troubleshooting queries uh, in a customer service use case through a chatbot conversation, you need to put yourself in the chatbot's position when you're writing the messages and ask yourself what you would say to the customer at that stage of the conversation. Um, what, how would you type the messages out? What would you ask them in that position? You talk to your friends and your family every single day over chat. You probably converse with your customers over phone and email. Uh, it's not over chat, but you are conversing with them over phone and email. Use that experience, use that expertise that you have from talking to these people every single day to inform the way that you write your chatbot conversations. And I guarantee that it will feel a lot more human. The issue that we see in a lot of our customers' chatbots when they first get started is that they think about their chatbots not as a conversation, but they think about it as one of the other assets, one of the many assets that they have in their marketing stacks or in their customer service stacks. So they end up writing their chatbots as if they are landing pages or websites which doesn't really work uh, because landing pages and websites aren't conversations. The prospect does not expect a, the prospect does not expect a human type interaction with, uh, with the landing page. They expect it to behave like a brochure, but with a chatbot, since it is a conversation, they expect that the thing on the other end, whether it's a piece of software or not acts, or at least tries to act like a human being. Um, so be wary of that. Keep that principle in mind when we are going through all of the tactics that we're about to discuss and keep that principle in mind when you leave this webinar and are building your own chatbots uh, for your own use cases. Now with that, we get to the fun part of this webinar. Uh, this is the part I was super excited about. Uh, we're actually gonna di dive into the five tactics that we want to use. And for that, I'm actually going to jump out of the slides and jump into the TARS Builder where in preparation for this webinar, I created a basic lead generation flow for a mortgage company. Uh, so over here, if we jump in, this is a chatbot that collects all of the details that you need to originate a loan, or at least start originating a loan uh, as a loan officer. Uh, it has some basic details. It asks for name, email, uh, the amount the house costs, the down payment amount, and it asks for estimated credit score. Now, obviously, in an actual mortgage uh, lead generation process, you'd have to ask for uh, quite a few more details, uh, even in the first stage. Uh, but for the purpose of this webinar, this serve gets across the point that this is how a chatbot for lead gen works. You capture a bunch of details in a row after uh, it, through a chat conversation. And what our job now is going to be is to optimize this chat flow to make it feel a lot more human. But before we do that, let's actually take a look at how this chatbot behaves. So I'm going to hit publish over here in the top right corner of the page. Hit publish. That makes the chatbot live. Now, if I jump into this other tab where the chatbot is open, I'm going to hit the refresh button and it is going to start the conversation. It's going to say, welcome to TARS Finance, affordable mortgage for your needs. What is your credit score? Now it's going to give me a bunch of options over here. I'm going to select the appropriate one. It's going to ask me my name. Let's say Arnav Patel. My email ID, I'll give it my TARS email ID, Arnav at hellotars.com. How much does the house cost? Let's say it's $500,000. And what is the percentage of the down payment? Let's say it's a 3% down payment. And now it's going to close out the conversation. Thank you. Your details have been submitted. This is a pretty basic flow, right? There's nothing controversial about it. It asks all of the details it needs. It does its job. It collects all of the information. Now to the untrained eye, this might seem like a good conversation. What's wrong with it? It gets the job done. What's the issue? Um, well, a lot as it turns out. Uh, and we're going to, as I mentioned before, we're going to delve into five of the issues. Uh, now, the first issue that I don't, the first issue with this chatbot that I don't like, that I intentionally did not include in this chatbot when I was building it, uh, because I see this in a lot of cases, is that this chatbot doesn't really have a persona. Uh, in a lot of, in a, in a lot of cases, we see chatbots where it just dives right into the lead generation flow. It doesn't really introduce itself. Um, 
Now, the entire purpose of this webinar is to make your chatbot feel more human. And human beings obviously have personas, they have personalities. Uh, we, all, we all have a background that informs the way we talk, that informs uh, the way we behave, it informs whether we have, we, whether we have good sense of humor or a bad sense of humor. Uh, and if you want your chatbot to feel more like a human being, you have to incorporate that persona. Now, I'm not asking for you guys to make a make the chat give a chatbot a full backstory if you want to go through that entire effort you can do that uh, but an easy way to give your chatbot a persona in the tars builder is just to give your chatbot a name let your customers know who they are talking to over here these messages don't in, imply who the chatbot is it doesn't imply imply w what personality the chatbot has or who who, who the chatbot is. I'm repeating myself now. Um, it seems like these messages are just coming out of thin air. Uh, we don't know who's sending these messages. They're just appearing on our screen and we're being asked to respond to them as a prospect. Uh, and that's not really a good way of going about things if you want your chatbot to feel human. So the, the one tiny change I'm gonna make here is I'm gonna jump into this first gambit. We call these things gambits, by the way. If this is your first time seeing the TARS Builder, you see all of these little boxes over here. This is a gambit. And a gambit is a single back and forth between a ch the chatbot and the user. So over here, the chatbot sends these messages. The user can respond with these buttons, just like we saw over here. Uh, so that's a single gambit. And we string together these gambits to create an entire lead generation flow. Um, so over here, what I'm going to do to add pers uh, a persona to this chatbot is I'm going to give it a name. So instead of jumping right into the questions, I'm going to say, welcome to TARS Finance. And then after I say that, I'm going to introduce the chatbot. So I'm going to say, I am Tar Lock, the TARS Finance Virtual Representative. Now they know who they're talking to. They can put a name on the personality they're talking to. It's not just some unnamed entity that's sending them messages. If I hit publish over here, open the bot up again, refresh the page, it says, welcome to TARS Finance. I'm Tarlock, the TARS virtual finance virtual representative. Affordable market for your needs. And then the lead generation process continues the way that it is. Now this one line, this single line over here, um, has done a lot actually. It has converted this chat, this, this chat interaction from a, an impersonal one into one that's slightly more personal. And that goes a long way in, it might seem like a small detail, but it goes a long way in making the conversation feel a little bit more human. Uh, now with that, we can actually move on to the second tactic that we have. Uh, and for this, before I jump back into the builder, I'm going to refresh this page and I want to show you guys something. Over here, when the messages start appearing, they appear almost immediately after each other. Um, if I click on eight, 800 to 850, what's your name? Uh, the messages appear very quickly over here. And actually by default, I was playing around with this. By default, if you create your chatbot, the message delays are just one second. We'll get into what message delays are, but this is what it usually looks like. If I refresh this page, it loads a little bit. It says, welcome to TARS Finance. And then all of the messages get sent one after the other with no delay in between. Now this might seem normal to most people. They're like, okay, it's a chatbot. It sends messages and then the user responds. What's the issue here? Uh, what's weird about this? Um, and what's weird about it is that Actual human beings, when they're, when they're chatting with someone, it takes them a little bit of time to type out the message. They don't send messages as instantly as the chatbot does over here. Uh, in fact, one thing that a lot of people are used to in chat conversations is when the other person is typing, they see the typing animation. They see those little bubbles going up and down. Or if you're using something like WhatsApp at the top, it says, this person is typing. Um, you're used to seeing that when you're chatting to other human beings. Uh, human beings take some time to actually type out the, the messages on, uh, their, on their keyboards. Uh, and it might seem like an inefficiency uh, to incorporate that into a chatbot. Isn't the whole point of using a robot that they're, that they're more efficient than, uh, than a human being? That's true. Uh, that is, it is an inefficiency in the way human beings talk, I guess, uh, if you want to think about it in that way. But the whole point of this webinar, the whole point of chatbots is to make the interaction feel like a human being. Those in quote unquote inefficiencies, whether we like it or not, are part of human interaction. And if you want your interaction in the chatbot to mimic a human interaction, then whether you like it or not, you are going to have to try and incorporate that in 
to your chat flow. And actually for this, for this webinar, I created a, a tiny little demo over here to show you guys how long it actually takes uh, a human being to type out a message. Now I'm a very slow typer, but I created this timer chatbot over here that times how long it takes for me to type a message. So I'm gonna hit start timer over here. It's gonna send me a couple of messages. Um, the API that I created is over here. Let's go ahead and refresh this and refresh this page as well. Hit the button below to get started. Let's say start timer. Timer started, type your message below. I'm gonna say, hello world. My name is Arnav. I don't know if you guys missed it, but over there I misspelled world and I had, to, I had to restart. I had to backspace and restart typing world. Now from the minute it sent me this message, the second it sent me this message, uh, till the second I hit enter before, uh, before sending this message, it took almost 6.9 seconds. Now we're not gonna make our chatbot type as slowly as I do, obviously, but it, it, it goes to show you that it actually takes time to type out a message. It's not like messages just, just, just appear instantly uh, in a chat with a human being. And we want to interact try and incorporate that into our chat interaction over here. So what I'm gonna do is in this chatbot, I'm gonna jump back into the builder, uh, open up the gambit over here, the first gambit again. Uh, and over here, if you look at the left side of the screen, what I was playing around with earlier that I called time message delays are these green bubbles that say 1.0 in them. Now what these bubbles do is they indicate how long the chatbot is going to wait before it sends the message to the right. So if I have 1.0, and then I have welcome to TARS Finance. That means the chatbot is going to wait for one second before sending this message. Similarly, it has 1.0 before saying I am Tarlock, the TARS Finance virtual representative. It's gonna wait one second before sending this message. So it'll send the welcome to TARS Finance, wait for one second, and then send the, the, the second message. Uh, similarly, all of these delays over here are one second. If I jump into any of the other gambits, the delays again over here are one second each. This is the default delay. Um, in all of them, uh, one second, one second, and even in the last gambit, you can see that it is one second. Now, what we are going to do is we're gonna adjust this to make it feel a little bit more natural. Uh, now, I'm a very slow typer, so it takes me a long time to type even, uh, even a, a, a short message. We're gonna make our chatbot type a little bit faster than I, than I do. The usual rule of thumb that we like to go with is if you, for each line of text that you have, each full line of text that you have, we go with around two seconds. Uh, so over here, I'm going to change this to two seconds. Uh, this third message over here is slightly shorter, so I'm not gonna make it quite two seconds, but I'm gonna maybe go 1.8. Um, and then the, the last message is even shorter, so let's go with a shorter time delay. We're gonna go with 1.3 maybe, or 1.5, let's go with 1.5. Hit save. Um, similarly, in all of the other ones, we can go in and change it. Over here, this is a pretty short message, so we're just gonna change it to 1.8 again. Uh, or actually, you know what? Let's just make it to 0. 0.0, make it a little bit more realistic. People don't type that fast. Uh, let's make all of these two seconds and see what difference it makes. Two seconds. Two seconds. And over here as well, we can make each of these two seconds. Or thank you, we can keep shorter because it's literally just thank you. Uh, hit save, publish, and jump back into the chat pod. Uh, now over here, it's gonna type a little bit. You see the typing animation, welcome to Tars Finance. Waits for two seconds before sending the next message. Waits for a little bit more time before sending the third message. Waits a little bit more time before sending the fourth message. Uh, and in between when it's waiting to send those messages, it shows the typing animation. So it's showing your prospects something that's familiar to them. When they use apps like Messenger every day, when they use regular text messaging, it shows the typing animation. It, it tells you that the person on the other end is typing. And we've added that into our chatbot conversation. It takes a little longer to send the messages, but it makes the chatbot feel, it makes it feel like the chatbot is actually thinking. It makes it feel like the chatbot isn't just a mindless machine that spits out messages. It makes it feel like it, it actually has thought that it's actually type, taking the effort to type out all of these messages. And similarly, if we go through over here, we can see it's typing. What's your name? And now it asks me for my name. So over here, Arna Patel. And similarly, it does so for the other messages. This is a small change you can make to make your chatbot feel a little bit more human. Uh, it, 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 again, the way I like to think about it is if you don't add delays, if I go back in here and change these all to one second each, 
it makes it feel like it's 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 just it's it's a mindless machine it's almost like just an engine that you just you just turn it on and it it runs it doesn't have any thought to it uh it's got about as much intelligence as a car although cars now i guess have a lot of computers in them that are really smart um as an old car maybe uh from a couple of decades ago but over here again let's refresh the page uh you can see that the messages just get spit out um instantly and that doesn't feel even though it, it happens a lot quicker it it really doesn't feel like you're talking to an actual thing on the other end uh, it just feels like a regular regular piece of software that's been wrapped in a um, in a chatbot skin uh, so we're going to go back in here and change the delays back so over here let's make this two let's make this 1.8 1.8 and let's make this 1.5 and hit save um so with that we have finished the second second tactic as well for this webinar by the way i created some notes over here uh, just to keep track of where i am um now the third third tactic we're going to discuss uh this is an issue people make even in forums let alone chatbots uh is the way that the questions are ordered in the chatbot so over here if i go through the chatbot what's the first thing the chatbot asks me it says what is your credit score and it asks what is your or I guess we should actually change this to estimated credit score. Uh, that's usually what they ask you. But the point is, the first thing that they ask you is, what is your estimated credit score? Now, credit score is a very personal detail that you're asking for. It's not really something that you can or should ask for right at the beginning of the lead generation interaction. Because... It, Think about it this way. If someone walked into your office, if you were an actual representative for Taurus Finance and they walked into your office and they said, I want a, I want a mortgage, would the first thing you say be, what's your credit score? No, you'd, you'd want to break the ice with them. You want to figure out who they are. You want to give them a customer service experience. You want to maybe make some small talk with them. Now, obviously, our chatbot isn't going to make small talk over here. But at the very least, I think that it would be good chat etiquette to ask the person for their name first. And in fact, I would say that of all of these details over here, the credit score is the most personal one. Uh, so instead of asking for the credit score at the beginning, I'm going to move credit score all the way to the end of the lead generation flow because I'm willing to ask for name. I'm willing to ask for house amount and down payment. This person wants a mortgage. So they probably have those numbers off the top of their head and they probably don't mind sharing that with someone who's giving them a mortgage. Um, and then I'm going to ask for credit score and maybe I'll even shift email and I'll, or maybe I'll keep email up there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this gambit. So if you click on this button over here in the top left of a gambit, it duplicates it. So I created credit score copy. I'm going to move credit score copy down to the bottom. So I'm going to disconnect these two gambits over here. All you have to do is take the, like click the connection between them and remove it and it gets removed. And if you want to connect it similarly, you just click on the socket that you have open over here and you connect it to the next socket that you want to connect it to and it gets connected. Uh, so I'm going to move the credit score copy gambit down here, maybe space them out a little bit, connect these up, and we can go in and change the messaging. Uh, we'll get into this a little bit in, uh, in the next tactic as well, but um, over here, obviously, we're not welcoming. Since this is happening at the end of the conversation, we're, we don't need to welcome them to the, 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 the conversation. So we're going to remove this. We're going to say, welcome to Taurus Finance, remove that. Um, remove the second one. They already know who we are at this point. Uh, remove affordable mortgages for your needs. We can remove that as well. Uh, what's your estimated credit score? We don't need this copy up here in the gambit name. So we can remove the underscore copy and hit save. And similarly, since we're asking for credit score at the end, we don't need to ask for it at the beginning. So we're going to change this gambit to an intro gambit. Intro. Um, affordable mortgage for your needs. And we're going to change this to generic. How can I help you today? And instead of having these buttons with credit score options, what we are going to do is we're just going to delete all of them except one and change it to um, get a free mortgage quote. Now, this isn't a tactic we were planning on discussing, but since I'm, since I'm doing this right now, I'll explain to you why I'm changing it to a button. Um, just think of this as a bonus tactic. Uh, but the reason I'm changing it to a button over here that says get a free mortgage quote is that when someone lands on your page, again, as I mentioned, this is the first time you're interacting with them. Um, you want to make it as easy as possible for them to 
start the conversation uh, because once they've started the conversation, they feel a level of investment in that conversation that makes them less likely to drop. And the easiest way to make them start a conversation is just give them one button to click real quick. Um, they have only one CTA on this thing. All they have to do is press that button and then the conversation started um, instead of giving them a bunch of buttons or making them type something out. So over here, by giving them the one button, we reduce the friction. Uh, but getting back to the main point we were talking about, the question ordering, now we don't ask for credit score first. Instead, we ask them for their name first, which is something that's more akin to actual human conversations. You're making small talk with them. You're figuring out who they are. Uh, you're telling them who you are. Um, that's how we talk to each other. That's how your chatbot should talk to your customers as well. Um, so keep that in mind. So that, that has to do with question ordering. Uh, keep that in mind. Another thing that I'll, I'll mention since we're on the topic, I crossed it out on my checklist over here, but another thing I will mention is that keep, keep, in, keep that in mind about the other details as well. So over here, we ask for house amount and then how much does it cost, how much does the house cost? And then we ask for the down payment percentage. Uh, what we sometimes see in chatbots is that these two details, which obviously go together, when you're talking about the house amount, you're obviously going to talk about the down payment percentage as well. Um, what a lot of people do is they separate these off. So maybe they'll ask for the house amount, then they'll ask for the credit score, and then they'll ask for the down payment. This doesn't really make sense uh, because usually in a conversation about mortgages, you would want to know the house amount and the down payment at the same time. Those details go together. Uh, so instead, what we're going to do is we're gonna just keep in mind, keep that in mind when you're creating your lead generation flow. Think about which details go well together and ask those details together. So we're going to ask for credit score after asking for house amount and down payment. Um, now with that out of the way, let's move on to the fourth, uh, the fourth tactic over here. And the fourth tactic has to do with message phrasing. Um, if I jump into this first gambit over here, it says, welcome to Tars Finance. I'm Tarlock, the Tars Finance Virtual Representative, affordable mortgage for your needs. This is another mistake we often see in chatbots. This phrase over here, the third message, uh, let's wait for it to load. Tar, welcome to Tars Finance. I'm Tarlock, the Tars Finance Virtual Representative, affordable mortgage for your needs. Um, Again, to the untrained eye, nothing wrong with this message, right? It conveys the value proposition of this company. They give you affordable mortgages. But who actually talks like this in an actual human conversation? Who says affordable mortgage for your needs? A good, a good rule of thumb, a good trick to figure out whether your messages sound awkward is read the messaging flow out to yourself. Read it out. If I read this out, welcome to Tars Finance. I'm Tarlock, the Tars Virtual Financial, Finance, the Tars Finance Virtual Representative. So far, so good. That's something someone might actually say. Affordable mortgage for your needs. That just hangs there like an incomplete sentence. You don't know where that came from. That's not how human beings actually talk to each other. Uh, this is how landing pages are written. And I think this is why a lot of people make this mistake. They're so used to making landing pages and they think of chatbots as just another digital asset that they end up writing their chatbot conversations as if they are landing pages. And you want to avoid that at all costs, costs because uh, obviously when a prospect sees a conversational, in, a conversational interface, whether on the other end there's a piece of software just like a landing page or not, they expect the experience to feel like a conversation with a human being and actual human beings don't talk like this. So what you want to do is you want to fix that. You want to rephrase the messages maybe um, as if a human being would say it. So instead of saying affordable mortgages for your needs, again, this is a really easy fix where it goes a long way in making the experience feel a little better. We can say we offer affordable mortgages for your needs. Now this we offer over here makes it feel like the chatbot is an actual person. It makes it feel like this isn't just a tagline. This isn't just a heading on a landing page. It's something that the chatbot is actually saying as a part of the company. When the chatbot says we, it implies that the chatbot is a part of the company. It's a member of Tars Finance's um, workforce. It's an employee of Tars Finance. Uh, and that again, goes back to adding a persona to this chatbot. Now we know that this is Tars Finance's virtual representative. We know that it works for this company and it views itself as a part of the company. Uh, it might sound a little bit salesy. We offer mortgage for your needs. Who really says the tagline of their company when they're in an actual sales conversation? Uh, but at the very least, it sounds like even if it is a salesy human being, it sounds like there's an actual thing on the other end talking to you. Um, there's an actual entity on the other hand that's talking to you like a human being might. Uh, similarly, let's scroll through this and see if there are any other examples of this. Uh, thank you. Your details have been submitted. Uh, 
no, that's fine. What is your estimated credit score? Uh, actually, over here, we can, we can think about this in, we can actually look at this as, as, as good phrasing over here. I inadvertently did this, but um, when you're asking for details through a form, usually the way you do it is you just say name and then you have a colon, right? Since this is a conversation, you want to ask it as a full question. So you're going to say, what's your name? That's how human beings would ask for it in an actual customer service interaction. Uh, so again, keep in mind the message phrasing point when you're creating your regular lead generation flow as well. What is your email ID? Don't just say email ID and then the colon. Uh, similarly, the house amount. What is how much does the house cost? Not house, house price, colon. And then in dollars, of course, um, just to qualify it and let them know that they need to share it in dollars. Um, and what is the, the, the down payment percentage? Uh, so over here, this is a great example. This is actually a great example of how you can think about message phrasing um, in a more human way, right? Uh, so in an actual conversation, if someone said, how much does the house, if you, if you ask the prospect, how much does the house cost? And then in the next question, in the next gambit, you are asking for a detail that's related to the one you just asked for. You're asking for a detail that is very related to the house cost, down payment. They always go together. Instead of saying, what is the down, the down payment percentage? You can say, and what is the down payment percentage? As if it's just a continuation of the previous detail. Now, this is technically incorrect grammar, a lot of people would say, because you so a lot of people say that you should not start start sentences with the word and, but an actual human conversation, if I was asking you, or think about it in the context of maybe a restaurant. Um, if you order something, you say, uh, what would you like? I'd like a burger. And would you like fries with that? Now you shouldn't start that question. You, grammatically, you maybe shouldn't start that question with an and at the beginning, but it makes sense. It, may, it makes sense in the con context of that conversation. It, it makes the conversation flow a little bit better. And that's exactly what we're doing over here. So when you're phrasing your messaging, again, revert to that one principle we talked about over here. Ask yourself what you would say in the bot's position uh, and use that um, to inform the messages that you write. Uh, don't make your messages sound like they could be on a landing page. This is not a landing page. This is a conversation. Think of your chatbot as an employee of your company. Um, or better yet, think of, think of your chatbot as yourself. So like, what would you say in the position? But think of your chatbot as an embodiment of your company. So if your business was a person, how would they talk? What would they say? That's your chatbot. Um, and now we finally get to the final tactic that we have. And I think this is my favorite one. Um, it's called user input acknowledgement. We've covered this in previous webinars as well. Uh, and I don't, I, it's something that I, I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily think about very much. It seems like a very small detail, but again, it goes a long way in making the chatbot feel a lot more human. Let's go through this lead generation flow again. And I want to show you guys something. I want to get you guys to pay attention to something. Um, think about how each question is asked. Think about what messages the chatbot sends or what message the chatbot sends. Get a free mortgage quote. What's your name? It doesn't say anything else. It just says, what's your name? I give it my name. It says, what's your email ID? I give it my email ID. And it says, how much does the house cost? This feels to me like an interrogation because the chatbot isn't saying anything except for the question that it needs to ask you to get the conversation done. And that's not how human conversations work. If you think about the way you talk to people, next, next time you're talking to someone, pay attention to how you talk to them. Think about all of the filler words that you put in. They might seem inefficient if you're thinking about it in a kind of robotic way, uh, but they that's, that's what makes human conversations human conversations. It's the affect. It's the additional things that you add to give personality to that conversation. Um, over here, let's say it's 3%. Um, and then over here, it says, what's your estimated credit score? Again, no, it, it, it's not adding any of those, those fillers. It's not adding any of those things that, make, uh, human, that, that makes human conversation um, feel personable, feel human, if you will. Uh, over here, we finally have an example of it. After it, you say the credit score, it says, thank you. And then your details have been submitted. But after it says your details have been submitted, nothing else. How do you end conversations with people? You don't just say your details have been submitted and then you shoo them out of your office to you, uh, or you cut the call with them, or you stop responding to their emails. You 
you try to close out the conversation. Um, might seem like a cosmetic change, but that's the way we talk. Um, and that's what you want your chatbot to do. Uh, so the easiest way to do this, and actually I, I, I had an example of this. If I jump into my Slack conversation with Ish, the co-founder of Dars, uh, if you look at the way we talk to each other, there's a lot of the, there's a, there's a lot of these fillers over here. Um, he said, Hey, this morning he messaged me and he said, Hey man, all good for the webinar. Uh, need any help? I said, all good with an emoji. He said, cool. Uh, this cool serves no purpose other than to acknowledge the fact that he got my message. Uh, he could have just moved on to the next question, which is Abhilash is up the other member of our marketing team, uh, coordinating you with you for this. Right. I said, Abhilash is up. I acknowledge what he said. And I said, I'm doing a quick rehearsal right now. And he said, okay, now he could have very easily not sent this. Okay. Uh, but then the conversation would have just been left hanging. He could have very easily not sent this cool over here. And the conversation uh, would have carried on as, as intended. Uh, but that's not the way we talk with each other. We like to acknowledge the person on the other end. We like to add these filler words to make the conversation feel more complete, feel like it flows a little better. Similarly over here, Hey man, quick update before I sleep. I have just one priority in the next two days, case studies. I need to catch up on this and other things. Webinars, podcasts are secondary. He's a cool man. Let's release a couple of case studies. Um, cool man, again, over here, um, not strictly speaking necessary, but it, it's a human touch. It makes the conversation feel, um, it makes the conversation feel more human. That's, that's how we talk to each other. So the way we are going to implement this in our chatbot is that we're going to make the chatbot not sound like an interrogator uh, trying to figure out whether you committed a crime. We're actually going to make the chatbot acknowledge what the user is saying. So over here, the user said, the chatbot sent a bunch of messages. The user clicked on this get a free mortgage quote and the conversational flow then goes to the name gambit where it asks for the name. Instead of just asking for the name directly, we are going to say something like, great. It's great that they want a free mortgage quote. We're happy about that. So we're going to say, great. I need a few details. Get you set up. Let's move this message before the name message. What is your name? Dog just woke up, scared that it'll start barking. Um, great, I need a few details to get you set up. What is your name? We've acknowledged the input. Instead of just saying, what's your name? We've told them that we've got their message. We said, great. And we've primed them for what's to come now. We're saying, I need a few details to get you set up. We're telling them why we are asking them for their name. This is how an actual conversation might go in person or over the phone or over email. Uh, similarly, over here, what's your email ID? They just shared their, this is the second detail. They just shared their name with us, right? So now instead of just saying, what is your email ID? We want to acknowledge the fact that they gave us their name. So we're going to say, nice to meet you. This is our first interaction with them again. So this is the first time we're meeting them. Nice to meet you. And then we're going to use data referencing. So curly braces, double curly braces. This, this data referencing feature essentially allows you to pull data from other parts of the conversation. So if a user shared a detail with you earlier, you can use like name, for example, you can use data referencing to pull their response. So in this case, their name, which is what they responded with into your conversation and display it over here. Uh, and the way you do that is you type in double curly braces. So you open them over here and then you close them over here. And in between you type the data that you want to reference. And there are a couple of ways of going about doing this, depending on which data you want to reference. But in this case, we want to ref ref reference the user response in the gambit that is entitled name. So this gambit is named name and we want to get the user response from this gambit. Whatever the user responded in this part of the conversation, we want to put it in here. And the way that we do that, um, we want to put it in over here. And the way that we want to do that is we want, within these curly braces, we want to type in URSP. That means user response dot. And then the name of the gambit, which we are referring to. So in this case, name. Now what this is going to do is it's going to say nice to meet you. And then whatever the user shared in the name gambit is going to appear over here in the message bubble. And then it's going to say, what is your email ID? Now this is a, just a common courtesy. It doesn't do anything to, to, to collect any more information with for you. It doesn't do anything uh, to, it doesn't give you any more, um, more information about your customer, uh, but it's a nice touch. 
it acknowledges what the user said, it makes the conversation feel a little bit more human. Again, this is something I'm gonna keep saying. Um, it makes it feel like an actual human being could be talking to you from the other end, uh, and we can hit save. Uh, similarly, let's go to house amount. Um, they just shared their email ID with us. We can say something like, got it. Again, all of these changes are really tiny changes, but if you add them all up together, it, it makes for a pretty dramatic uh, shift in the user experience of your chat. But all we're doing is we're adding a got it over here. That acknowledges the fact that we got their email. Um, over here in the down payment gambit, so we said got it, What? how much does the house cost? In the down payment gambit, we don't really need to acknowledge user input because again, we can view this as a continuation of the previous detail. How much does the house cost and what is the down payment percentage go together? We don't really need to, um, we don't need, really need to say, okay, I got the house payment, uh, I got the house cost, got it, what's the down payment percentage? We can just say, what's the house cost? And what's the down payment percentage? And then say, okay, I got those two details together. You can think of them as two halves as one, uh, two halves of the same one. In fact, if you think about it, the addition of this and over here is a form of user input acknowledgement uh, in and of itself. Because the and implies that you got the previous half of this detail, and now you just need the second half of this detail. Uh, finally, in the end, um, so let's go to credit score real quick. Um, now over here, we've got both halves. We've got the down payment percentage and we've got the house cost. And now we want to ask for the credit score. We can say something like uh, noted, just another way of saying got it, uh, save. And then finally at the end, thank you, your details have been submitted. Now we need to close out the conversation. We have not acknowledged the fact that the conversation has ended. So we want to acknowledge that. Um, we're going to say, thank you for your time. What would you say in this situation? Um, let's move this thank you down. We'll say your details have been submitted. Thank you for your time. We'll be in touch soon. Have a nice day. The conversation's ended, but we've actually ended the conversation with something that tells the user that the conversation has ended. It's not abrupt. It doesn't feel like there's a robot talking to you on the other end. Uh, and we can actually, I don't know if I hit publish already, but oh, yeah, there we go. Now I hit publish. If we go into this chat button now and we interact with this lead generation flow, it feels a lot different than it did at the beginning. At the beginning, it was very bare bones. It was very basic. Uh, it did not, all of the messages got sent immediately. Um, it didn't acknowledge the details that we were sharing with the chatbot. It just asked me the questions straight up. Uh, and now it actually feels like this chatbot has some personality. We know who we're talking to. The chatbot actually says things like a human being would. It actually acknowledges our input. When we tell it our name over here, it actually says, nice to meet you. And then our name, and then it asks for our other details. And if we make it all the way to the end of the conversation, how much does the house cost? 500. 3% estimated credit score. If we make it all the way to the end of the conversation, it actually closes up the conversation like a human being would. And with that, we have all five of our tactics that we promised you guys in this webinar down. Uh, to recap really quick, first we had the persona. So we introduced who the chatbot is. We gave the chatbot a name. So the prospect knows who they're talking to. Uh, then we talked about delays so that when the chatbot sends messages, they don't get sent instantly. It makes it makes the user think that the chatbot is actually typing the messages out on the other end, uh, just like a human being would. So it actually has to go to the effort of typing out these messages. Um, it orders the, the, the questions in a way that feels a little more natural. It asks for name first, um, makes a little bit of small talk. It doesn't ask for credit score first. Um, it phrases the messages in a way that is that is more amenable to human conversation as opposed to just a landing page. So over here, instead of just saying affordable mortgage for your needs, we, it says we offer affordable mortgage uh, for your needs. Um, again, makes it sound like the chatbot is an actual person, is an actual being that is an employee of this company. Um, and finally, we, oh, um, yeah, yeah. And finally, we have message acknowledgement or user input acknowledgement. The prospect over here said get a free mortgage quote. Instead of just jumping right into the, the the questions, the chatbot says, great, I need a few details to get you set up. What is your name? Um, 
that's pretty much it in terms of the tactics that we have. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in uh, in the in the Q and A section or in the chat right now. I'd be more than happy to answer. Uh, if you guys need to leave, though, uh, one last thing uh, that I will mention, or last couple of things that I will mention. One, we have recorded this webinar, so we will send you a recording after the webinar has processed. Zoom takes a little bit to process it, uh, and then it takes us a little time to upload it and maybe. Uh, make a few edits just on the front and the back, but we'll send it to you immediately after that. The best way to get a hold of this recording is to either go directly to our webinars page where we will upload it. So if I go to hellotars.com, resources, webinars. If you go over here, we have all our previous webinars. You can see all of these recordings as well. Uh, if you jump into the page, we will upload the webinar and this image over here will be replaced by the webinar. Or what you can do is you can sign up for our newsletter. Um, so let me see if I can get uh, the newsletter profile, our newsletter profile. If you haven't already subscribed for our newsletter, you should definitely do so. Uh, it is sort of the, the pinnacle of our um, it is the pinnacle of our of our content creation. We do have a YouTube channel, which you guys should check out. Um, let me see if I can find that and link it to you guys as well. Um, uh, Dar's chatbot. Yep, over here, you can see that our YouTube channel pops up if you look at Dar's chat, but uh, let me share this channel with you guys in the, oh, Abil, uh, Abilash from my team is sharing uh, links as well. Thanks, Abilash. Uh, I'm sharing the YouTube channel as well. We upload all our webinars over here. Um, we upload all our other content over here as well, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Um, we actually have a podcast series, which is not currently not there on the um, homepage, but we will add it. Um, I'll let it immediately after this, but if you go to playlists, we do have a podcast series, which you guys should definitely check out. Uh, we've been investing a lot of time and effort into that. Um, and of course you can reach, uh, and of course, if you have any more questions after this webinar, not relating to the recording, you can reach out to us using these details over here. Uh, you can re call us, uh, on the number that you see on your screen right now. You can email me, uh, at arnav at hellotars.com, or you can go to our website, hellotars.com and reach out to us over there. Um, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any additional questions, drop them in the chat, we'll respond. If not, we can close out the webinar. Um, we're actually a little under on the time, which is great because we usually go way over uh, and that's definitely an issue because you guys have better things to do and uh, we have better things to do, so. Um, or actually we don't, what am I talking about? These webinars are literally, literally my job, so. Uh, <laughs> I can stay as long as uh, you guys want, but um, if you guys need more help, um, drop a question in the chat and we would be more than happy to answer. Okay, uh, we don't have any questions today, which is fine. Um, thank you guys for joining us. It was a pleasure hosting this webinar for you guys. Um, keep a lookout for our recording. And if you think of any questions after, um, if you think of any questions after the webinar session has ended, feel free to reach out to us using these details. Uh, when we send out the webinar recording, you can just scrub all the way to the end of the recording and check out the details over there.